it's Friday, July 22nd, 2016. You're moving at the speed of creativity with Wesley Fryer and Shelly Fryer. Narrowcasting from Highway 169 northbound from Tulsa, Oklahoma, inbound to Manhattan, Kansas. Well, good afternoon and welcome to a podcast from the road. And this is going to be a reflection on really a solid week of iPad media camps because the first three days of this week, Shelly was out in eastern Oklahoma in Stillwell at Marietta School working with a couple other teachers to co-facilitate and lead an iPad media camp for uh, pre-K through 8th grade teachers that are there at Marietta School. And the last two days, Shelly and I have been in Tulsa, Oklahoma at Tulsa Tech And we had a chance together to co-facilitate a workshop for about 16 uh, high school teachers and also adult educators. And it was a very eclectic group and probably a more adult ed and, and high school iPad media camp than I've probably ever had because... Even last year, I think, because I did, I did an iPad media camp last year in Tulsa, I think it was a little bit more mixed, but maybe not. Maybe it was mostly high school then too. So anyway, what we're going to do is reflect a little bit on this past iPad media camp, and then we have a recording that Shelly made yesterday as a reflection. She is the Opinion app, which is the iPhone app that she does her, her class radio shows for Room 108. And so it's about, I think, five or six minutes long, and it's uh, it's great having our different participants say who they are and what they teach in some cases, and then talk about their takeaways just from day one. Um, this was a two-day iPad media camp, and generally I have done these as three days. This is the fourth summer of iPad media camps, and most of the iPad media camps I've actually been, I've taught on my own. Um, but in a couple of different circumstances, it's been fun to get to co-teach those with other people. And um, anyway, we'll just, uh, after we hear that, the reflections from the participants, then uh, I had taken some notes when, when I had had a phone call with Shelly. Gosh, maybe that was on, on Wednesday after the first one. And she was just full of, you know, takeaways and, and ideas and, and, and things. So I'm going to hand the phone to her to talk a little bit just as far as her impressions about this iPad Media Camp. How is, how is this one different and what did you think went well or stood out for you? Um, well, number one, it's very different to doing a, a workshop when um, all the technology works pretty well. Our wireless was pretty good for the whole time. Um, it was harder when we were out in southeastern Oklahoma. It was a lot edgier, and so we had to um, keep up with that. So it's really nice. Um, also, it was a little different um, this one because we had most of the teachers will pretty familiar with their iPads. They had done a variety of different projects already. Um, They used the iPads mainly for their own teaching. I don't think they had ever really used them with the students. And so that was a little different. They were comfortable with teaching with iPads, doing things themselves to get to the students, but not necessarily having the students um, producing media. So that was a little different as well. So... um, I think that was my my biggest takeaway just as far as um, the class. And as you know, in any classroom situation, you really never know what you're going to get until you get there and start building up relationship with them. And that's something I'd say is a significant departure from the last three summers of iPad media camps because um, for the the three-day one um, out in eastern Oklahoma, I had done quite a bit of planning and preparation for that one, but then handed that off to Shelly and a couple other teachers to lead. Uh, my opportunity and availability to, to be gone is different this year as I'm a technology director, and uh, next week I'll be leading a three-day three, pit, I, three day iPad media camp at my school, primarily for teachers at our school, and I'm really excited about that. But in the past, and this is something that's been really great to have Shelly's input and sort of just observer eyes on, uh, I tend to pack tons of information and resources and just like kind of overwhelm, even though I say, I don't want to overwhelm you. I give like this massive, you know, collection of links and resources and 
So uh, for the three day that Shelly did earlier in the week, they really just had a had a firm plan for day one and then a uh, matrix of projects and some ideas, but we're going to kind of see how things went. And uh, that went well this time too. Uh, we only had the two days instead of having three days, but last summer, I think, more so, I really got this sense that it was very beneficial rather than jumping into complex projects to just start with the basics and to start with pictures and then start with narrated photos and then build to the narrated slideshow instead of just jumping straight to narrated slideshow. And that really went well. And the central sort of organizing document for this year's iPad Media Camp I call the project, what, no, activ- the, the media activity and project matrix. And so there's four different categories, and I'll include a link to it. It's a Google drawing document, but it includes some, some large group um, projects and then single app projects with Seesaw. And maybe I'll ask you to comment on the Seesaw a little bit. I just love that. It was so wonderful. So maybe you can tell people a little bit about that. And then um, two app you know, create and share applications, things like word clouds or photo collages, or it can be a simple narrated slideshow, and then the more complicated ones. And we really spent a lot less time on the complicated, you know, green screen project and, um, you know, iMovie trailer and some of those, those fancier things. And we used a stair-step approach for narrated slideshow using Photo Puppet, what is that right? I'm saying that wrong. Shadow Puppet EDU, I'm getting all my name is mixed up. So Shadow Puppet EDU, created by the same folks behind Seesaw, a very simple but yet powerful app for creating narrated slideshows, then doing what is now called Adobe Spark Video. It used to be Adobe Voice, Adobe Spark Video, I have to say that repeatedly, um, which is a much more robust and polished narrated slideshow app. However, you have to log into that, and so that presents, you know, a, a speed bump that, that everyone's got to gotta get over in order to use the app. And then, um, oh, but actually we did that one third. We did explain everything first. So do you want to talk a little bit about Seesaw and, and tell about how that worked? And, and you can talk about it in both workshops, but this was the first year, first time ever to use Seesaw and get everybody into a Seesaw classroom. Seesaw is a digital learning journal. And so that teachers can use in their classroom and they've recently updated um, to a more robust school version for those schools that are really working on um, skills based and being able to track that and then also being able to have journals travel with students um, from year to year. And so um, the reason that we, of course, number one, I've used Seesaw in the classroom for two years now and um, and I absolutely love it. It's an easy way for students to, um, to get um, the information, not only digital information, but any kind of information by taking a picture of it into a place where I can store it digitally and therefore I can archive um, the work that they're doing in the classroom. Um, it provides a great time for them to be able to reflect and record their voices. Um, there's just every time I use it, I think of a different way that I can use it in another project. So it's extremely flexible. Um, and the thing that makes it really good for the format that we're doing with this iPad Media Camp is is that we are creating a lot of media projects um, during that. And, and we've always struggled with finding a way to be able to turn that in to us, but then very quickly being able to showcase because we always kind of end each activity with a show and share situation because we learn so much from each other and how you know other people view or how they might use it in their classroom and so seesaw has made it very easy whether you're a one-to-one environment or whether you're in a shared um, environment with the ipad it works well in both cases Um, And in the case of these workshops, we've all had our individual um, Seesaw accounts. And what was interesting, however, is that although the participants became the students 
in the Seesaw Learning Journal. And then the workshop leaders were the teachers in the workshop environment. And so participants got to see how students um, were a part of that learning journal process. And I want to comment on two things, then maybe we can cut over to the participant takeaways and, and we'll we'll insert that and we're by the way we're recording this podcast in voice record pro which is a free app even though it's called pro for both the ipad and the iphone we did not teach it in um this ipad media camp i don't think you all did either did you on uh, uh, marietta but um it's a great app that allows you to do a lot of things including i've never uh, this will be the first time to do this you can actually combine recordings but it allows you to uh, select an image if you want to and save it to your photo roll so we can actually publish this podcast to youtube pardon me and then i think i'll probably download it on my laptop later and insert maybe some audio bumpers or things like that to polish it a little bit but here are the, the two things i want to say about seesaw number one <laughs> at the end of today's workshop we had just because of the way we'd allocated time, we only had about 30 minutes or so for teachers to be exploring green screen or iMovie trailer, and we showed examples of both and then gave them a chance to. Well, in our iMovie, I did the iMovie trailer group, and you know, we had uh, two of the participants complete iMovie trailers using media on their device, and they both, you know, flipped them into Seesaw, and so. I mean, literally, with just, you know, minutes to spare, my laptop's at, at the front of the classroom hooked up to the projector, you know, we're playing those videos and seeing them that they've just flipped off of their, that sounds bad, they flipped them off, they, yeah. <laughs> they flipped them into, into Seesaw uh, from their iPads, it's just phenomenal. And Seesaw, you can change the setting in the class, but the, the default setting is that it compresses it to a 300 and, uh, 360p uh, video, whereas like... Um, I guess regular resolution would be 540 maybe, and then 720p is high definition, and you have 1080. Anyway, so it, it reduces the resolution, makes it upload faster, makes it play faster. It was great, and it was like one of these, oh, I don't know, amazing, wonderful things. The other thing I'll say, learning about Seesaw, is that you can set it up differently, and in the Marietta workshop, the beginning of the week, um, I had helped them set it up, and I think you ended up deleting mine and creating another one, but anyway they set it up with individual email logins so each teacher then joined the class using the special qr code did you still use qr code to scan they just sign up with an email. okay but how did they get to the place to sign up how did they get to your class did they use a code uh yeah it's a class code they had a class code okay so so te so the teachers signed up as students they used a class code and then they logged in with their email okay but we decided to not do it that way and if you don't have student emails or you don't use student emails seesaw provides two different ways to handle the student logins one is a shared device mode which we did not use in ipad media camp but if you are limited and only have you know one ipad or a few ipads this is the way to go and with the shared mode the students at the time they are putting something into seesaw select their name right is this how uh, actually i don't know that i've used it in this way with just one they they scan something or they they create something and, and then if it's in shared mode they choose their name and then it goes into their journal and, yes, they, and you set up your class ahead of time right so you set up your class with your participants or your students um, ahead of time and then when they scan that code they select their name and then they are into their journal right they and cannot change their avatar when they can when they do it that way right I'm just checking to make sure we're still recording I think we are um, so the way that we set it up for this iPad media camp um, I had everybody's name in advance and I uh, you know selected one-to-one -one mode which is when they're going to have their own iPad that they're not going to share with others and um, when they're in Seesaw they're always themselves and so what that required was having their names in advance no email addresses put all their names in uh, we had I think one person maybe who wasn't on the original registration or two and easy just to e easy to yeah, manage students add students and we um, 
you know, used it that way. And it was fantastic. And there were there wasn't any need to say, oh, I don't remember my email address or that whole stuff with login. So just keep that in mind. Three different ways to set up the Seesaw. Um, either log in with email, um, and it does support Google. So if, if your kids, if you're in a Google uh, situation with Google Apps for Education, they can do that. But if you're not using email, the, sh the shared iPad or the one-to-one -one way, the one-to-one -one way worked great. I I'll say this. I do not want to do another iPad Media Camp without Seesaw. Seesaw made it unbelievably frictionless. There's a good word for the sharing of all of our work and you know we, we demonstrated links and other things but you know just this was a big takeaway from last year app smashing is an intermediate to advanced skill asking teachers to app smash and we i think i've understood this and you talk about it from because you were in marriott again last or previously last summer it's so easy to overwhelm teachers and a lot of times it takes so many different clicks to get a project in a position where we can actually see it and view it yeah. it's just way more complicated well that's the ethic of minimal clicks from uh, my 2011 book playing with media saying look the fewer clicks it takes the fewer steps it takes the fewer touches in the case of a tablet you know the more you're going to do it your students are going to do it so kudos to the seesaw folks and um, it was just fantastic so what i think i'm going to do now is, is stop this recording and we're going to cut over to the participant uh, shared takeaways from day one um, this was a podcast made with opinion app so shout out to opinion um, shelly made what 35 36 how many podcasts something like that last year a lot of classroom radio shows which you can find at classroom.shellyfryer.com right and we did also didn't mention the URL if you want to take a look at the curriculum and the resources and all that you can't get into the seesaw but you can see a lot of the resources from the workshop go ahead over to ipadmediacamp.com you can click curriculum at the top or if you directly want to go to the Google site it's wiki w i k i dot ipadmediacamp.com and then in the left sidebar you can click on July 2016 Tulsa and then you'll see the resources far fewer linked resources in this iPad media camp as well as the earlier one um, this week than previous summers but I think in many ways perhaps a hopefully a better workshop experience so here we go with participant takeaways from day one Today is July 21st and this is the fourth floor iPad Media Camp coming to you live from Tulsa. Our question for today is, what's one idea you will take and use in your classroom? My name is Jill and I teach sports medicine and one way that I can use some of the things we've talked about is narrated art and using um, having students use pencil and paper to draw an anatomy lesson that we might be talking about and then narrating that at the end as a review. Um, and being able to submit that through Seesaw. My name is Aaron Creighton. I teach culinary arts and uh, my takeaway is, is Seesaw. It seems like it's going to take a lot of uh, pressure off of me to force team building exercises and I think that will let the class uh, predict how that goes. My name's Debbie Wakened and I will definitely be using Padlet, uh, working with my students on leadership activities, uh, generating their strengths, and they can see theirs and everybody else's, and we can form a, an officer team. My name is Kim, and I am also going to use Padlet to discuss uh, issues of ethics and other societal issues in computer science. This is Susan. I work, I'm the nursing coordinator. I was thinking that I like the um, narrated video to give report between shifts for the students to practice giving and taking report. My name is Angela and I plan on using Padlet to um, help the kids share their ideas to one another. My name is Paula. I teach nursing and I want to use um, various um, 
of the apps that we learned today. I really like them being able to do the little art and draw, maybe do people concept maps and um, maybe draw what their patient look like and then they can um, do priority of care by labeling what is the first thing we need to take care of. And they can do that with them video, with their discussion with that. So I don't know, got lots, lots of ideas. My name is Linda Jones and I am actually a professional developing developer for uh, for educators and showing them how to integrate technology so I see using a lot of these things when they're coming in and they're purchasing iPads and all and wondering what they can do to uh, engage their students in the classroom. I'm Phyllis Murphy I'm a career advisor and one of our responsibilities is going out to all of the students um, and giving group presentations. I'd like to use this opinion poll that we're doing now to ask current students what are some of the advantages or benefits they have had by attending Tulsa Tech and then using that to show prospective students. My name is Tony Bottoms. I'm a professional truck driving instructor. I can definitely see using the recording and drawing at the same time particularly to help my students point out components of vehicles that they need to learn and to help highlight that. I'm Wes and I have enjoyed using Padlet today and also just the word cloud of Pull Everywhere. I mean these are tools I've used before but I really liked um, as I have before seeing the thinking of the group and having a chance to amplify ideas that might not have come to our attention if we didn't have that back channel and so I, I liked that introductory activity getting to know a little bit about topics that folks were teaching just as we started the day and I'll probably continue to use that tool. I'm Lindsay, a math instructor and I could use Seesaw and the recording and drawing feature to have students submit solutions to problems and also talk through their steps while they're working it out. Joey Bartek, I would like to take away from uh, using QR codes. I think it'd be beneficial to set up um, pieces of uh, equipment, uh, not only a safety video, but also how to set up and operate it. All right, there's some very smart people in this classroom, and so I really enjoy hearing all of the takeaways that they're gonna do and go back into the classroom. So um, thank you so much for listening. All right, well, it was great to hear the feedback. In fact, I think that was one of the best reflective, probably, well, it was, it was the best reflective activity we did during the two days was, was that podcast. So um, we did, we had some trouble with the the airplay mirroring, I actually had to tether my laptop to my phone and then connect Shelly's phone to my phone. And anyway, the airplay worked that way because um, for some reason it, it didn't work uh, on the, the Wi-Fi that they had. And I think that maybe because of guests, sometimes guest wireless networks are set up to not be, uh, be airplay friendly. But anyway, Shelly was able to record that whole thing on her phone and the participants could see on the screen what she was doing because it was being airplay reflected. So what were some of the other takeaways and just important learning points from your earlier iPad Media Camp, Shelley, that you took notes on and, and talked about? One thing that I think it's really important when you're doing an iPad Media Camp like this, and it's all about making and creating um, in digital formats, is to not lose sight of the pedagogy that is involved. And I tried to remind people of this all the time. It was like, what the most important thing is designing the lesson. It's it's taking what teachers are already doing in their classroom um, and then designing that lesson, but then creating a media project. So the students have got to be the most important part of this equation. You know, these lessons need to be very student-centered. And then we we take that lesson and add in the technology component. The technology is just the tool here. We are not teaching a technology lesson. We are teaching a lesson. We are designing it with the student in mind. And then we are adding in a digital component and then saving it in a digital format so that we can get back to that later. later. I think the misconception um, with having iPads in the classroom is that the kids are just on their iPads all the time. Well, that is not necessarily the case um, because one of the best activities we did in our um, Marietta workshop was we had a lot of 
pre-k through second grade teachers and and we made puppets and we used construction paper and we glued on googly eyes and then we used that art um, that lesson because what they were doing is they were creating characters to introduce a book to their classroom it was a book talk and so um, yeah it's an activity that we did in an A plus workshop integrating that art into our curriculum and so then we just added a technology component so we took those puppets that the students or in this case the teachers had created um, and then we took it into an app called Chatterpix and then we use that in order to introduce that book this is something that students can do but we started with the pedagogy of doing the hands-on manipulative great lessons that teachers are already doing that they're comfortable doing but then just added that creation of a technology component to it. It's just good pedagogy and making sure that we put the students first. The lesson is first and deciding what it is that we want them to do um, with that. So, and then again, we you can add that into Seesaw. Another misconception is that everything has to be created digitally. It doesn't. Um, we were listening to a, a podcast. Um, it was a story. And we were doing um, a visual note taking, a narrated art activity. And so we were drawing in the Seesaw app in their draw feature while they were listening to a story. We did the, um, the hen who laid the golden egg. So we're listening to a story. Well, I look around the classroom and one student's drawing on a piece of paper. One of the teachers has just got a piece of paper and she's drawing. She's drawing a story. I mean, she's drawing her visual art. She's drawing the picture. Um, and that was great. I didn't mention anything till we got to the end. And then I later I looked over and she's drawing it now, after the fact, into her seesaw I mean, I'm like, what are you doing she said well I thought I had to no 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 your picture's great you don't have to do it. I can take my camera I can snap a picture of that drawing that you did and you can still narrate that it's not about the technology it's about using the technology to enhance and so I think what's important is whichever medium we can still capture that with the technology make that learning visible in a digital format that we can put into their li digital journal i hear what you're saying and and understand as far as not wanting the focus to be on the technology it's not about focusing on technology it's about focusing on learning and on the ideas but I, I always cringe when people say it's not about the technology because that's like telling a human being it's not about the air. You don't need the air, you know, telling a fish. You don't need the water. I think the internet connectivity, the digital tools, you know, ought to be just like air in the room or water in the pool. You know, these are media that we utilize to learn, to live, to operate in the environment. So... Um, the way I would say that is it's the focus is not the technology. The focus is not the device. The focus is not the apps. The focus is the learning and the focus is, you know, what we're going to do with it. Cause I think sometimes we've got to be careful because if we say it's not about the technology, then some people say, well, it doesn't matter. And I mean, it does matter. You know, if you're going to hand me a Kindle or, you know, not an iPad, <laughs> I'm not going to be making much. I'm going to be reading some books, but I'm not going to be creating a lot of media. So, so one of the one of the great things that Shelley brought to the workshop was just was good strategies for working with teachers and uh, having brain breaks and having different ways of grouping. So, you want to tell us about fold the line? Yes, one of the other teachers in the workshop um, modeled this, and I thought it was a great idea. One thing we consistently tried to do was gauge um, the temperature of the, the classroom. You know, where were teachers feeling, you know, with the technology usage? Were we overwhelming them? And so we had a rating system, one being, I am totally overwhelmed, I'm ready to go home, you know, this is not good for me to five yeah I can rock this I can teach this this is awesome and so we did that with the you know 
just a quick survey so that we could gauge the temperature of the classroom. So you would just show it right up against your chest, you know, one, two, three, four, five. Um, it's a signal just for the teacher, but, but we could easily see, do we have threes and fours? Do we have ones and twos? Um, and so in this particular activity, it was great because we had them get in one line. And then so at one end of the line, we had our ones, the people that were just still very not feeling sure about all this technology stuff to five, you know, being one of the technology trainers, you know. And so we got in this long individual line and then we folded the line so we took the ones and we just kind of folded the line to the other end kind of like a conga line um, to the other end to pair them up with somebody across so that one, each end of the spectrum so the one was paired up with the five and then it kind of went down from there so everybody had a partner that could either help them or that they were on pretty even keel with and so it's a great way to to not only gauge the classroom but also get them partnered up with somebody who can be a support to them who can be a help to them and then a way of grouping them for possibly the next activity and so that my participants who were struggling who needed extra support that we couldn't always get around to all of those but had somebody there that could experience that lesson with them and help them through that so looking at your your list actually when Shelly called me um Wednesday I guess I I jotted down all these notes and then I, I took pictures of my notes so I, I know one of the things that you said at the top I really like this was maybe a selfie activity first now i'll say this there was a participant uh, yesterday in our workshop who was really reluctant to do the selfie and we also asked for a video reflection and just didn't want to do that and i was encouraging him or maybe pushing him a little bit and he left and i thought oh my gosh he came back today so that was good and who knows why he left but um yeah i mean not everybody is into that but uh very neat in seesaw in the in this closed and private sharing space inside sharing as we've talked about inside and outside sharing um, kind of cool to do that early and then you you know are able to visually recognize who that is and make that kind of a connection what other things did you talk about or did we jot down for the earlier workshop well and also to go along with that um, at the end of the day we asked them to do a video reflection project so that we could um, so they're they were supposed to do a video reflection of themselves in seesaw um, two things that they had learned that they will be able to take back to their classroom, two ideas uh, that they were going to take back to their classroom. But one, you know, what do I still want to know? What do I know what to know more about? And, and that was great because we did that at the end of the first day and that began to help us build out the next day and making sure because some people were saying things that we had not even planned to do like blogging they wanted a classroom blog or green screen they wanted to do a green screen or an iMovie trailer and those things whereas maybe we weren't focused on doing that what we went back and made sure we did and others I was able to make comments back into them and give them some individual links so if somebody was interested in something like a badge system and we could give them a link to a blog post or something within their comment so that they could have something to go back and look at and I'd like to hear you elaborate on this because I know it's huge in your classroom um not assuming that teachers are necessarily just like kids going to give high quality comments and then the value of the instructor or the teacher comments can you within seesaw can you elaborate on that a little well co making comments to some constructive comments is something that we really do need to focus on um, it's something that i work with with my, my students and we can't assume that everybody knows that so rather than commenting awesome job cute picture those are positive comments which is good we want to we want positive comments but what we also want is constructive comments that was a great way of showing your learning I like the way that you use the very hungry caterpillar to tell the story or you know telling them what was good about it and we always make our especially 
because I make comments visible to the students and so that they can comment to each other. It becomes a way that we interact. It's kind of an interactive writing. Um, we could also um, audio record comments, which is nice in Seesaw as well. Um, what I do like about the new version of Seesaw is that there's a new special bubble um, in the paid version. There's that's a comment just from the teacher so it's private and it's not displayed for the rest of the classroom to see and it doesn't even go to the parents it's a private comment between the teacher and the student and I really like that too so if I really needed to give him some constructive um, criticism uh, you know you need to um, focus on making sure that all of your um, proper nouns are capitalized. You know, some kind of teacher feedback that maybe I didn't want to make him feel bad so that everybody would see, but that was a private thing um, between the two of us. So um, I like that feature where the teacher now can do that. That made me think of a couple things. Number one, particularly in this iPad Media Camp for the high school and adult learner instructors, um, we had nursing teachers. We had uh, one one guy, uh, Tony, is uh, teaching truck driving, uh, culinary arts. In fact, we did a poll. Every, aviation yeah, av aviation mechanics. We had we did a poll everywhere, and, and one of them does. It wasn't even knife safety. It was knife skills. Yeah, I was like, knife skills. that's cool. Teaching knife skills because we asked people what topics they taught. But um, thinking of the teachers, you know, from two perspectives. With iPad Media Camp, I have come, I've tended to come at it more on the, the student project basis, like really encouraging teachers to increase the menu of options for how you're going to you know, allow or ask students to show what they know. And by the way, if you haven't visited showwithmedia.com, I mean, that, that particular website has been the focus of, of a lot of the iPad Media Camp you know, media ideas um, the last couple years, and it still is. But that wasn't the only focus. Also, you know, thinking of the teacher, and I've done this before too, but I was a little more intentional or cognizant of it this year. Thinking about, you know, teacher video production, teacher as, you know, flipping, as a flipped classroom instructor. And, but also, but, but, you know, both things. How can, how can these tools be used as an instructor, as a teacher, flipping the classroom? creating blended lessons, chunking your content, right? That's a big idea we talked about as far as breaking your content into small pieces. And gosh, one of our, our teachers, was it Jill? I'm trying to remember. She's done over, she's done hundreds of videos and I loved her story. This was a great story where she had originally done all of her videos on YouTube private to her students, but her, her students smartphone. came back and said, I am so tired of showing the, your videos to my friends. Can you just make them public? And so she has all her videos public. In fact, we need to follow up with her. I've got her email um, to get her link. Um, and I, cause I love it when we find these teachers who are, who've discovered YouTube and are sharing and, and, and recognize the benefit, not only for their students, but also for others as well. So thinking about those two hats uh, that the teachers are, are kind of wearing coming at this of, of you know, thinking about it as a teacher tool and, and for teacher productivity and teacher you know lesson delivery but also you know from the student standpoint or thinking about student projects um, that was significant and then there was something else that I think I just forgot I was going to say Oh, um, the whole class instruction. So one of the things that I, I wanted to do and, and we pulled off successfully was, um, oh gosh, turn right on US 66. We're in Coffeyville, Kansas, and thankfully Google Maps pops up and tells you what to do when you are recording and you're on the lock screen. Um, I didn't just want to do individual projects. Um, I'm very fond of, and I'll continue to give the shout out to Marco Torres, who years ago I first heard say this uh, idea of a quick victory. It's a project or an idea, a strategy that you can just apply right away. You know, we can do it right now. We can do it tomorrow. Uh, we don't have to, you know, get a grant for equipment and supplies and take a couple weeks to do it. It's just something you can do now. And so in the matrix of, of media activities and projects, which, which actually you can get from from iPadMediaCamp.com directly. If you 
Go to ipadmediacamp.com slash matrix or just go to the website and click matrix at the top. Um, there, the, the Google Draw document is embedded there. And in the upper left corner, there's four different project types. And one of them is like class brainstorm. And so we did a Padlet on day one, um, which actually I liked better using the it was like an organized there's a way to control the layout so that as people are tapping and putting things on there they all you know go up to the top but they organize themselves and then today we used a titan pad titan pad is a website that runs a free open source program called etherpad which is an interactive writing space uh, one of the reasons i did it was because shelly had never seen that or, or been a part of that in a classroom and I'm absolutely convinced that one of the important keys to turning on the light for a teacher with a new tool is seeing it in action and being you know a student in a class where it's being used um, so I'm gonna toss it to you to, to will you talk about etherpad at all no about titan pad just like what that was what your impressions were about it you want to talk about that you were helping other people try to problem solve. Okay, well, I'll just say that I, I felt that went well. Um, I think Shelly seemed, thought it was a little bit messy. It is oftentimes when you're, you know, with a shared document. I'm going to put up a blog post because this last February on Leap Year, we had a Leap Day um, special election focus at, in our middle division. And I had a chance to teach fifth through eighth graders a lesson about social media and the election. And I used um, Etherpad interactive writing spaces for them in their groups to take a different candidate because the Democratic and Republican primaries weren't decided at that point and uh, do research about the use of social media by that candidate. Their you know, uses of Twitter and, and things that they were talking about on Twitter, YouTube, uh, things like that. So anyway, it was short, um, part of, of each morning, but I felt good about that and um, was happy that we included it because as the teachers did their feedback or their, their takeaways, and you heard that some of that in the podcast, you know, a, a large number of them talked about you know, using Padlet um, and doing some of those whole class activities. So, any other thoughts that you have, Shelly, about either of the of the iPad Media Camps in terms of of things to keep in mind or things that we should do again or any anything else? I think it's really important that we continue this conversation of of helping students to create and show media something that we didn't talk about because we were mainly focusing on the teachers and the students um, is the way that we communicate to parents the way that we communicate to our stakeholders uh, who you know we have a we need to be educating people outside of the walls of our classroom about what is going on inside the walls of the classroom. We need to be telling our story. We need to be showcasing what our students are doing and and giving them voice and letting their voices be heard. And this is just becoming my mantra. And, And all of these things, I was just thinking as Wes was talking, man, I have to do a workshop with parents at the beginning of the school year and I want to help them support their students in education and many times some of our parents who have not been in school certainly weren't using the digital tools the way that our students are now they don't really understand it Um, and so I was just thinking hmm maybe when we do that I'll have each student let their parent use their iPad during my workshop and maybe I'll just have a little mini session and have them experience some of these apps that we're using so and but I think it's really important that parents begin to see that because the awesome thing about seesaw you would think this is a seesaw workshop or something um, is that you can invite parents to see their students portfolio and so as things are added to the student portfolio the parent gets a notification and then has the opportunity to give feedback and I think that's phenomenal and I think the more that we can include parents in the educational process in order for so that they can support their students education in a positive way I think that's the big payoff and then if we are able to share that out to a wider audience uh, maybe on a, a classroom blog or as Wes was saying a classroom YouTube channel 
I think that's even better because then we are involving others in what's going on inside the classroom and we can show them that um, these students are learning and and that they are the future and I will be ready to turn my future over to them someday. All right well we're gonna wrap this up I'm gonna uh, we're gonna both kind of tell we should have said this at the beginning but sort of what we're what we're doing professionally and where people can reach us where what our web links are um, but then the last question we've kind of had a long string of uh, professional development this summer as we tend to have tended to do the last couple of years we did have a, a family vacation but um, my question to you Shelley is gonna be and I'll answer it first but I'm just gonna kind of preview it um, ISTE going on going there being an iPad Palooza doing these iPad media camps what has been one of your big takeaways one of your big learning points um, whether that's an app or a um, strategy or you know I'm all over that a little bit are you, and, and so let's say who, who we are though and where people can contact us and then we'll do that last question um, so I'm Wes Fryer I'm the director of technology at Cassidy School in Oklahoma City a pre-k through 12th grade independent school seven minutes from our house in wonderful Northwest Oklahoma City you can reach me on Twitter at W Fryer my blog where you are likely listening to this podcast is speedofcreativity.org and uh, I'm also podcasting almost weekly on the ed- education or the ed tech situation room uh, with Jason Neifer, my friend from Missoula, Montana. And you can find that at edtechsr on Twitter or edtechsr.com. How about you, Shelly? What do you do? Where can people find you? Well, my biggest takeaway, and I kind of alluded to it before, um, is advocating for student voice. I went to several sessions at ISTE on social justice and just how students can be involved and using their voices to, you know, change the world, to to make a difference, to, to help somebody else. And um, I think that's a really important way for us to help our students advocate or advocate for our students. Uh, my name is Shelley Fryer. I'm a third and fourth grade teacher at Positive Tomorrow School in Oklahoma City. We are a private nonprofit school for homeless children. You can um, reach me on my classroom webpage, um, which is classroom.shellyfryer.com, on my personal blog, which is shellyfryer.com, and on Twitter at, at @sfryer. I think one of my takeaways, um, and this was <clears throat> reinforced for me at the at the PBS Digital Learning Summit, that um, I was thankful to have an opportunity to uh, participate in at, at ISTE. It was a pre-event, so it was on Sunday before ISTE actually kicked off. Um, but just the value of collaboration and connecting, and uh, and being able to. Um, to get together and share ideas with like-minded folks, right? Um, it is, it is really powerful to, um, well, number one, to know that you're not alone. Um, and I, I ended the the workshop today with iPad Media Camp, you know, with a little, little bit of a pep talk and a, a little bit of a commissioning talking about you know, commissioning teachers to go forth and, and uh, encourage their students to show what they know with media and to, to create media products. But um, just this idea that <clears throat> we're living in, in in crazy times and incredible times. You know, we won't even go to the election and talk about all of that and what's happening. But, you know, from the standpoint of learning, it is a phenomenal time, not only because of the access that we have to information, um, but the access that we have to each other. So if you have listened to the end of this podcast, which is probably going to be about an hour long, uh, please let us know. Reach out to us. uh, Say, hey, Wes, hey, Shelly, we we listen to the podcast, and if there's anything in particular that resonated with you, that would be great. If you are doing iPad training, if you're doing professional development, uh, and you've got ideas and things like that, um, let us know what those are. Uh, If you've got a podcast that that you're sharing, um, I just, you know, I've been podcasting for over 10 years now, I guess, since 2005. Learn so much from... um, Uh, from others and you know these are powerful tools at one time I was working on a project called powerful ingredients for blended learning podcasts are powerful so we appreciate you learning and we will check in with you next time thank you for listening